Good morning, everyone. How you doing? And for those of you on the live stream, because this is actually on the interweb, guys, mahalo, all right? Just can't ignore the folks out there. Wow, what an amazing time to be a technologist. I mean, just look what Solomon was talking about. We have so many tools out there to make us computer scientist artists, right? And what do we strive when we want to be computer science artists? Sir, you read Knuth Volume 1, 2, and 3? Very good, yes. That's a good thing to do. But there's also a couple other things that have been told to me over the years. And that is one, understand your past, okay, respect it, right? Live in the present, work with others, and help forge the future. And that's what we're going to try to do here in the next couple of minutes. Let's just spend a couple of minutes talking about the past. Look, it is an amazing time to be in open source. And look, hats off to Tim. Because that free software summit that he hosted back in 98, anyone here for that? One person. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, one person in the back. Thank you. The term open source hit the mainstream. But then we had foundations like Linux, right, where many, many companies and many of you all spent countless hours and billions of dollars creating an open operating system. Apache and the Apache license where we can all freely share and utilize open source code. And the art of contributing code and building community, Eclipse. These are examples, just some examples of the past that lay the tracks for the present, where we live today. I mean, we all take advantage when you take your iPhone out. Yes, put that phone away and listen to me, sir, please. <laughs> and you're playing your games. That's writing on HTTP. It's using the Apache HTTP code. Every single web application server that does two-phase commit on a transaction is using that same code. Okay, guys? It was written years ago. Okay? We're using that code. We are relying on that code. But guess what? <laughs> the innovation that is going to come is going to be amazing. Because think about it. There are two things happening, actually three things happening in parallel. First of all, all of us as open source practitioners like Solomon or Sam Ramji who's talking later, or a lot of you all here in the presentation are building out the infrastructure of the future, okay? We're building out cloud, cognitive, internet of things, data, analytics. All of these things are driven by huge open source projects, right? Spark, Hadoop, Graph, Titan, you name it, right? Lots of really big things driving these. But at the same time, we are building those applications, the use cases. In fact, half of the population here are actually end users from enterprises, from what I would consider clients, right, who want to use the technology. So we're building and using at the same time. That's a little painful. <laughs> the other thing with cloud is that you cannot hide continuous integration and delivery. When you can hide, when you architect, it is very different. You need to architect with operations in mind. These are huge differences. So as a community, as an organization, we need to evolve. At IBM, we're always evolving. Guess what? We don't make typewriters anymore, <laughs> and we don't make meat slicers. But we certainly make a lot of cool cloud technology and open source technology. If you look at just five years ago, you know, we had a handful of repositories. Now we have literally thousands of public repositories. We have thousands of you know, contributors to open source but over a thousand committers, people who can actually change code in the communities. We have 60,000 open source certified developers. We're a 400,000 person family. It's a, you know, Thanksgiving gets a little large at our house, but, but you know, it is, it is simply amazing how we have kind of become from a proprietary company to a truly open company. Now, let's move to today, because today's application is not an island. It's a living business process. And yes, if you love state machines, it's a living state machine. They're isomorphic, guys. Get over it. Okay? Let's, let, let me spend a couple of minutes on each of these technologies. Cloud, three of them. OpenStack, containers, the Open Container Initiative, Docker, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. In fact, I stood on stage at OSCON last year with my friends from Google and, and uh, Jim Zemlin from the Linux Foundation to announce the CNCF. And, of course, Cloud Foundry. There are two really important areas for those of us who are contributing code there to think about in this next year. Number one, interoperability, folks. Let's not forget that. There's a huge emphasis in all of these organizations to make sure that every cloud can behave as one. Because if not, the applications you build will be dead end. You will not have a living business process. So keep that in mind. The second, and I loved when Solomon was talking about the problem of 
building out a hypervisor, a common networking model. And hey, let's not forget security. What we're trying to do in these communities is have commonality across them. We want an open cloud architecture that takes, say, Neutron and OVN and OpenStack and makes that the substrate in which you build out your container environment, the substrate in which you build out your foundry environment, or that you have a security token that you can pass from a user interface all the way through into the, into the application, into the hypervisor, and into, say, the hardware with something like open power with trusted security, okay? That's what we're trying to do. That's what we need to focus on. But, you know, if you think of the cloud as kind of the uh, stretchable canvas we all live on, right, what about the brushes and the colors? You're artists. Get the analogy, guys? Brushes and colors. Well, programming language is critically, critically important. We live in a polyglot world. Two of them I want to talk about, Node and Swift. Look, about a year ago, we helped bring Node into the Linux Foundation. Since then, enterprise adoption of Node has skyrocketed. And think about what we've done with JavaScript. <laughs> I mean, with one line of code, you can write a RESTful application. It's unbelievable, right? Swift creating a common paradigm for user interface design and server-side processing, and of course, APIs. Who here uses Swagger? Everybody, I hope, <laughs> to define your APIs. <laughs> so you can tell who are the true developers and who just pretend. <laughs> you might want to start with Knuth Volume 1. <laughs> All right. Look, we help bring Swagger into the Linux Foundation to extend it so we can have more enterprise-like qualities the Open API Initiative. These are three really important areas as developers and as open source developers we need to understand. And oh my, blockchain. The redefinition of a trusted partnership. If you are able to build a business process, an application, okay, on a flexible infrastructure, scale it across any geography, use the language of your choice, connect to many things in APIs, and then also have a trusted relationship, add a little cognitive in there, your applications could change themselves, right? That is the world we live in today. But, you know, when I talk to, to, to my colleagues and, and, and a lot of you, that's, they say, that's not enough, Angel. I need more. I want more. I'm like, how can you want more? You want to kind of take your applications off the rails. You can't, you can't put baby in a corner, they say, right? Um, I don't know what that means, but they keep on telling me that. Well, event-driven architectures. Right? Imagine you build a container application, you build a Cloud Foundry application, you expose it through an API, you have declarative logic between the request and response, and you can quickly change your application without bringing the server down. Open WISC, an open source project for doing event-driven architectures. You can try this stuff out, okay? Just go to bluemix.net, that is our cloud. We have all of this available, you can download it from a place that we call Developer Works Open, or just go to Git, okay? However you choose. But it is a great way to get started to hone your practice. But guess what? It is on us, okay, as open source practitioners and computer scientists to help spread the word. Because yes, open source is taking over the world. All of you here understand that. But open source and computer science is a young discipline, guys. Folks don't understand the history. They don't understand how to behave. They don't understand the notion of open governance. We have to help them. And the biggest difference between today than when I stood on the stage a year ago is that I cannot, I, I cannot imagine. Uh, I've had so many clients come to me and ask me, how do I start an open source pra practice within my organization? Many of you work for big firms. How do you start that practice? So if we are successful, this conference will triple in size next year <laughs> because there will be so many large companies doing open source the right way with us. So two pieces of advice there. The first one, set your target. Simply throwing people at open source projects, not very helpful. <laughs> Understanding what you're trying to accomplish, build a matrix, the kinds of projects that, that matter, rank them, the heat map becomes apparent put the right developers in the right projects. Not only will you help the community in a positive way, but at the same time, you'll actually get some business result and can perhaps can scale your, your project. The second is, and it's funny because we, we all want to start this way, we want to create a center of competence around open source, which is great. It's good to have people who focus on that day to day. That is no way to scale open source in a company, especially a large company. It just doesn't work. It doesn't scale. You can't scale people that way. The good news is that us, as computer scientists and as developers, right, we are changing the way we write code. 
we, look, we, we leverage DevOps, right? We build on squads. We have meritocracies, right? We have the notion of pair programming. Let's embed, okay? Let's embed how we write open source into the development processes so you don't fork. So you actually do code that's upstream, right? That will make the community's life easier and certainly your life as a consumer of open source easier as well. In fact, that's what we do in IBM. That's how we build our code. About a year ago, we open sourced a methodology for doing this at Gene Kim's DevOps Summit in Santa Clara. So you can come check that out if, you, if you're interested in doing that uh, as well. So at the end of the day, we can learn anything, everything we need to know about the future of open source can be taught to us by Anders Zorn, a Swedish artist who essentially perfected the notion of mixing and bringing together colors to create new things and working with others. So I challenge you all to do that, and I thank you for your time. Please attend many of these exciting sessions and enjoy the conference. Thank you very much, everybody.